I'm John Fish. I'm a Harvard sophomore studying computer science, and in 2018, I read 52 books, one for each week of the year. So doing a little bit of, you know, back of the envelope math, those 52 books translates to roughly 15,000 pages or 4.5 million words, meaning that at my rate of reading, I spent about 250 hours in 2018 just reading for fun. So obviously that's a lot of time and energy dedicated to doing something voluntary, not to mention money because I ended up buying a bunch of the books. So I guess the question after having, you know, done this challenge, having committed to my New Year's resolution and, and successfully achieved it, was it worth it? And before I get started, I'd just like to thank Audible for sponsoring this video, but more from them at the end. So in a word, yes, it was worth it. The decision to read so many books, to spend so much time reading for fun was a really good decision. And here's why. So the first thing that I noticed when I started to pick up on this habit was that when I wasn't reading, I felt a little bit more calm and in general, I was just a little bit more productive. It, it wasn't a, a major change, but there was definitely a change. When I stopped reading uh, towards the end of the summer for a few weeks, just fell off the habit for a little bit, uh, I definitely noticed, you know, an impact. And you know, when I was when I was reflecting about this, you know, process, and when I was when I was thinking about making this video, I realized that that ultimately, I think this just came down to taking a little bit of time, about an hour every day, just to myself, quiet. You know, like everyone my age, really. Uh, I'm a habitual user of social media, but you know, constantly being bombarded with all of the the stimulation, you know, likes, comments just being able to scroll forever, it's a lot of noise and it can get really overwhelmed. And so just taking a little bit of time out of every day to just be a little bit quiet and to focus and be in the moment has been tremendously beneficial. But it wasn't like I was just, you know, sitting there. Usually, these were some of the most productive hours of my day. Let me explain. So like most people, I've kind of grown up in a bubble. The people around me, as I've been growing up, have generally had the same opinions and perspectives on life as me because they've been formed by their own life experiences, which generally overlapped with mine. And I think no matter who you are, this is generally true. Nobody has experienced the full range of what life has to offer. It, it, it's simply impossible. And so in this way, we're all a little bit ignorant. We're all biased in our opinions and our perspectives. And this can lead to, you know, reduced sympathy and discrimination and just a, a general lack of understanding of what your neighbors are going through. And so to me, this is something that's, you know, incredibly valuable to, to broaden my perspectives. It's something that as a student, I, I want to spend time doing. And so this is why I think reading is so valuable because it affords me the opportunity to understand life from the perspectives of very diverse authors. You know, I read books by Holocaust survivors, by victims of, of discrimination in Southern USA. I read books by, you know, famous CEOs, crazy business people, philosophers, ancient Zen masters. I mean, the list goes on. And all of these people have had their perspectives and opinions shaped by living incredibly interesting lives and have built wisdom over years and decades that they've finally put into a book. And in only a few hours, I can read that book and my perspectives on life can be changed in some way by what they have to say. You know, as a 19 year old kid, this is tremendously valuable to me because I, I recognize, you know, I'm inexperienced and the experiences that I do have might not be, you know, representative of what is fair and what is good for myself and the people around me when it comes to making decisions. And so any effort that I can make to educate myself and to broaden those perspectives to me is valuable. So finding an hour every day for, for reading is more finding an hour every day to become more educated, to broaden my perspectives on life. And like I said, you know, that's just a no-brainer to me. Finally, as a student, I think what makes voluntary reading so powerful is that it's unlike any other type of learning that you ever do in school or in life, because you can literally learn about whatever you want. It's entirely free form. You know, rather than learning from the, the curriculum set by teachers or school boards or governments, which, to be fair, is totally valuable in some cases, 
you could just bounce around to whatever interests you and, and to whatever you think will be most valuable to you, whether that be, you know, autobiographies, whether it be fiction, whether it be, you know, nonfiction, how-to books, whether it be philosophy, religion, whatever interests you, you can read about and you can become more educated in that field. So I've voiced this opinion before, which is that, you know, reading in school kind of turns reading for fun into a chore because, you know, we're prescribed chapters and we, we view it as homework, as menial task work to be done. But in reality, what reading allows us to do is it allows us to, to develop the very essence of what makes us human, which is our intelligence. It allows us to, to focus on the things that we find interesting, to become, you know, better people. And beyond that, there are, there are literally books on millions of subjects. Like, there are so many books out there and it doesn't have to cost money, right? There are libraries in you know, every city, every school, and you can really learn about interesting topics from crazy people for, for no cost at all. I mean, sure, you can buy books if you want, but you don't have to. And talking about free books, uh, I think this is a good moment to cut to a message from the sponsor. This video is brought to you by Audible. Now, Audible is one of the long-term supporters of this channel, and the reason that I keep working with them is because I use Audible almost every day. So let me explain. Usually on, you know, any given day, I'm walking at least for, you know, 30 to 60 minutes, and what, what I find is really helpful to pass the time is to listen to audiobooks. So recently I listened to uh, the audiobook Armada by Ernest Cline, narrated by Will Wheaton. Uh, this book is, is really great. Armada, it just came out um, relatively recently, and, and I highly recommend it. So if you've been thinking about giving audiobooks a shot, uh, Audible is definitely the way to go with it. And, and the way that you can do this is by going to audible.com slash johnfish, or by texting the code johnfish to 500-500. So what this is going to get you is a 30-day free trial of Audible, a free audiobook from their gigantic library, and two free Audible originals. So that's three pieces of audio content that you're getting for free. So again, if you want to get started with Audible, go to audible.com slash johnfish or text johnfish to 500-500. There's a link in the description. And yeah, I use Audible like every day. So this one's a no-brainer to me. So yeah, I am, uh, I'm really glad that I read a book every week last year, uh, on average at least. Uh, there were a few weeks where I didn't read some and a few weeks where I read more. But nevertheless, uh, it's a habit that I was you know, really happy to have picked up and I'm going to continue in 2019. So if you want to uh, follow along and, and hear what I'm learning, feel free to subscribe. You can also follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at TheJohnFish. Links for those will be in the description. Uh, sometimes I do some you know, sharing of, of books that I'm reading, interesting little snippets that you won't find uh, if you just follow me on YouTube. So yeah, thanks so much for watching the video and I will see you shortly.